Hello and good morning from High Gear Transmissions in beautiful Memphis, Tennessee. Today I'm here to show you the differences and the similarities between the Jeep 5-speed 4.0, 4.2, the Peugeot model, and the AX15 model. The Peugeot came in various Jeep models, 4.0, 4.2, 4.0s from 87 to 89, and 4.2 was from 87 to 90, I believe. The AX15 took over a 1990 and 4.0 engine from uh, 1990 to 2000. And the 4.2, it showed up uh, for 1990 only. The Peugeot, however, if you are looking to identify the two, if you don't know which one you have and you want to know um, how to identify it, the Peugeot's got a tail housing and a small center section, and it's got these two main case halves, and they split lengthwise. And that's the main factor in determining the difference between the two, is whether or not it splits lengthwise or if it splits horizontally. So, the AX15 has got a main case, it's got a tail housing, and it's got a center section right here. On the 5 speeds, 4.0 4.2, AX15, early and late, they had an aluminum center plate. The 4 cylinder models, the AX5, had a cast iron center plate. It was just like this, except for it was smaller, had a smaller input obviously with more splines instead of a coarse spline. Now, we do not build the Peugeot transmission. It is a poor design, we don't sell it, we don't build it, and um, I will do a video in the future explaining why the Peugeot is a poor design for those of you that are interested. When we do get a call on a Peugeot transmission, we build the AX15 and we sell a conversion that requires you to uh, replace the input for your transfer case. You need a bell housing, you'll need a shifter stick and stub, and you'll need a mount it allows you to use your original cross member for the Peugeot. So let me show you the differences, that way you'll understand. The rear section, you're going to be the same here and here, your transfer case bolting up, but the problem is, is your output shaft is smaller on the Peugeot than on the AX15. The AX15 is a little bit bigger. In order to get around that, for our conversion, we take an input, we either replace your input and your transfer case if you send it in, or we sell an input with the conversion and you can replace it yourself. It's not that hard, but um, as you can see, that turns inside there and that doesn't. That actually grabs hold of the shaft nice and tight and turns good. So you'll need to input. The shifter location here is different. So you'll need a new shifter uh, tower, stick, and stuff. These shifter towers come in two different sizes, two different heights pretty much, but it's all the same, it bolts up. You just have to uh, buy the tower, the shifter stick and stuff, and you'll be good to go. Now your bell housing is going to be a little bit different. Both of these are internal slave, both of them have the same clutch splines, and both of them have the same uh, pilot tip diameter and length. So you don't have any trouble there, but you will have trouble with the bell housing. So you will need a bell housing. You'll want an internal slave bell housing versus an external slave bell housing. You can use the external slave bell housings, but you have to reroute the hydraulic lines, and it's kind of a pain. I would just suggest to get an internal slave bell housing. And of course, you'll also need a, uh, a mount kit. And that's pretty much it. If you have any questions or would like to call and ask us anything, please feel free to check out our website and uh, give us a call. We'll be happy to talk to you. Thank you very much.